Welcome to the Femininja Project. I am your host, Cheryl I Love, middle-aged ninja hiding in plain sight, dedicated to restoring human dignity one person at a time and helping you unleash your personal power. Discover that it's possible to look like a woman, act like a lady, move like a ninja, and think like a warrior. And remember, men are always welcome on the Femininja Project. I have a fantastic guest uh, with me today. Her name is Tammy McVeigh. So Tammy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and talk with you today. You have no idea how excited I am. I have been looking forward to this all week because I met you, it's probably been about two or three weeks ago at a networking group. And there was something about you, it was like, I need to get to know this lady. And then we had coffee last week and I, it was a two and a half hour long <laughs> coffee. Did you realize that? <laughs> no, I didn't realize that. Because <laughs> when I got into the car, it's like, oh, it seems like it's been a while. And I looked, it was like, oh my gosh, it was over two and a half hours, which I thought, score, that's when you know that you've really made a connection. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that we can pick up when, when you just meet a kindred spirit. Uh -huh. So I'm really excited just to be, have a continue our deeper conversation and share with others. Well, let's just get started because there were so many things about you that I found so interesting and intriguing even before I got to know you better. And the first one was you are a Marine. Yes, I am so grateful that I made that decision at such a young age to, to I just wanted to serve my country. And I figured what better way to do it than to join the best. Wow. And how old were you when you made this decision? I was actually 17. Oh my goodness. Yes. My mother had to sign the papers uh, <gasps> just to let me get in. <laughs> so you started, you actually got in at 17? I enlisted on New Year's Eve um, and I was still 17. So I didn't turn 18 until January. Wow. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm always disappointed that my listeners can't see my facial expressions because <laughs> it's just like, wow. Did your, did your mother give you any grief about it? Did, did your family try and talk you out of it? Or what was their reaction when you said, hey, guess what? I've decided what I'm going to do. Uh, no, I didn't get any grief at all. But what was really funny is I didn't have other family members in the military. I mean, my brother did a short stint in the National Guard. Uh -huh. But uh, my mother, she just said, are you sure you want to do this? We were sitting at the table with a recruiter. And I said, if I don't do this, I won't do anything. And I was an honor student, and I don't know what made me say that, like not thinking I would do anything, but I just felt like I, that was the path I needed to take. That's really fascinating. You just knew. Yes. And did it come overnight, or was it something that was in the back of your head? No, for the past two years, I had been intrigued by the military, uh -huh. and I, I didn't, my family didn't have money. So to me, college was this big, expensive thing, and mm -hmm. I needed to know what I wanted to do. And nobody told me it was okay to not know what you wanted and go to college. Uh -huh. And so uh, I had taken the ASVAB, which is the, the entry exam you have to take for the, the military. So I did it in that my junior and senior year. But I, I wanted to go into the Air Force. And uh, the Air Force recruiter had told me I could be a secretary or a cook. Ugh. And I was like, well, I don't want to do that. And so I pretty much just thought, OK, that's it for the military. But then um, I didn't even think of women in the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. And then uh, my boyfriend in high school, his sister was a Marine. And so she came to visit. She was living in Hawaii. She was pretty. And turns out she was in HR, basically. So uh -huh. she was a secretary. <laughs> but I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. I mm -hmm. thought, well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to join the Marine Corps. Wow, that's just incredible. Were you always really incredibly fit or no. physically fit? No, I didn't do sports or anything when I was in uh, high school. What? made you think you could get through boot camp. I just... I, I, honestly, I really don't know. Like, and I, you know, I've thought of a lot about that that made me think that like just to not be, oh, I shouldn't say I wasn't afraid of the physical aspect because obviously I, I was, but I've just always had this, I'll, I'll figure things out and I can get through it. Uh -huh. um, but I have to admit that once I got to boot camp, I was terrified. Like, what did I get myself into? Wow. I wanted out. I'm like, I couldn't believe that I was there. I was miserable. Oh. Uh, but that's the that's the whole point. They right. want to break you down so much. Exactly. They want to break you and then build you back up again, or just to mm -hmm. build what we would call in martial arts to build our spirit. Yes. And I guess in the Marine Corps, they would probably call it character. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing I've talked about too. Even now, what I'm doing today is just that to be able to break something down and then rebuild it in the way that is the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and they need to be able to get you thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. So they have to break out all that other, you know, bad way of thinking. So they're really actually impacting your belief systems. Absolutely. And your self-image because the way you feel about yourself and, the, and all of the things that you believe in, you know, might be getting in the way if you do have to go into combat. Yes. Well, and, and the Marine Corps is so different from the other branches in that they're so steeped in tradition. Oh, I love that. And um, they have really strong values mm -hmm. like integrity and loyalty and things like that. And so they really instill that in each and every uh, Marine. Mm -hmm. And so that's why even long after getting out of the military, the Marines are loyal to the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of other branches, once they're out, they don't really talk about that aspect mm -hmm. too much. Or if they're loyal, it's to the guys that they served in combat with. Mm -hmm. So, and there is a saying, I think, once a Marine, always a Marine. Absolutely. So, and that is how you introduce yourself. Yes. And wear that badge proudly. And it's a little bit of... Um, a surprise, I think, is what people would say. I have a, I know a, big, a business coach, really nice guy, who calls it a pattern interrupt because to look at you, you wouldn't think, oh, that woman must be a Marine because, you know, <laughs> you are, you're pretty, you're delicate, you know, you're just, you know, obviously really smart and uh, yeah, you just wouldn't expect that. Well, I, I like that too because it also complements the military in general, just being stealthy. Uh -huh. You know that people don't, they underestimate you. Yes. And so all of a sudden to show that, and like you said, it's just that shock value. Right. Well, it, I get the same thing with the ninja thing. Oh, too. absolutely. And yeah, they don't expect somebody like me to be able to take someone down and, you know, without messing up their hair or their makeup, but then just go and get your nails done. So, but, but I think that's part of being a powerful person, especially as a woman, is that you don't have to look like, you know, oh, I'm going to take you down, I'm going to beat you up. It's that gentle strength, almost a quiet um, sense of confidence, and even grace that you have. And people can pick up on that. And I'm just wondering if that's kind of what the two of us picked up on with each other when we first met a few weeks ago. I definitely agree. I, I think that too many women feel that uh, to be powerful and strong, like you have to be come across forceful or, or mm -hmm. loud or, um, you know, that whole bitch mentality right. too, you know, that like you just, you, you can, like you said, it's this subtle underlying inner strength and confidence that just radiates from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And I think that that inside out piece of it is what people pick up on. Well, it's more genuine. Yes. And it, it does. It comes from so deep within yourself, from deep inside your core. And some of the other women that I see who are trying to be really strong and powerful, it's almost like they're doing it from an outside source, you know, from an external source of look at my muscles and look at me do this. And it's like, it, there's always going to be somebody who's, you know, bigger, faster, stronger, younger, and, you know, can outlast you if you're only talking about that kind of physical strength. When you're talking about that power that really comes from deep within us, there's no one that can really, or nothing that can take us down. Definitely. And, and the, um, the whole inner strength, um, or the external forces that you were talking about, mm -hmm. I also feel that those external forces, it's, it's almost like being forceful in, in your energy and the way you're showing up because uh, you're trying to prove something to somebody mm -hmm. else or that fear of judgment. And so you're just like, it's almost comes from a place of insecurity. Right, right. Well, and then it kind of relates to of a vulnerability as far as, you know, with what you went through in going through boot camp and stuff, it really, you're in a place of vulnerability because they are testing you at a level that is really, really incredibly high. Yes. Yes, and just the uh, teaching you uh, focus and then that discipline mm -hmm. and, um, you know, really making you have to shut other things out, all mm -hmm. the other noise, and really just stay laser focused on mm -hmm. what it is you're either you need to do. Um, I think that that is a gift that I didn't even really think about at the time that I took taken for granted. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it really helped um, with your intuition? 
Yes, I feel like I have such a strong sense that when it comes to reading people, reading mm-hmm. situations, and it's almost like looking um, from the outside, or like almost like an observation mm-hmm. in that I can see people where they're at on their journey. Mm-hmm. And so I don't take things personally. I just kind of realize like where they're at. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's just that situational awareness. Mm-hmm. Which everybody can benefit from. Yes. And I think with all of our devices, our cell phones and, you know, the 24 hour news cycle and everything, you know, the traffic, all of that gets muddled. We have, we're, we're paying attention to so many external things that that sense of really that self-awareness and paying attention it, it's hard to do. So it really does take a lot of work to get to that point. Yes. And, and like you said, that just all the, that stimulation, mm-hmm. it makes us so reactive. Mm-hmm. But when you come back to that grounding and that confidence and inner strength of who you are, mm-hmm. then it's much easier to not be reactive. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted you to just mention this, because when you talk about being in the Marine Corps and you talk about your experience, you just say what a wonderful experience it was. Yes. Like once I actually got out of boot camp and went to school, I just, because at that point you are a Marine. Like they don't call you Marines at all during boot camp because you're not until the very end ceremony where you receive your Eagle Globe and Anchor. And, but once I got to school and to be just a part of something, a, mm-hmm. a brotherhood that I, I just, I loved it. I had so much fun. And it was really interesting as a woman too, like the ratio where I went to school was 200 men to every woman. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, so I stood out like a sore thumb. I'll bet you did. And people would make assumptions. And But once you, once they got to know you and then they had that respect, mm-hmm. then they were true brothers and would protect you. And it was, it was incredible. Wow, what an experience. Yeah. So what was it like? when you did finish boot camp and you graduated my first question is did everybody make it all the way through boot camp no definitely not because some people get injured and Mm -hmm. so then they have to uh wait and heal and so they you know go to um this they i can't remember what they call it some platoon where they just recover like a rehab yeah and then once they're back in then they just pick up with a new whatever platoon Mm -hmm. happens to be going through were you the only woman at boot camp, it's all women. They keep you separated. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, but I found out that there are point zero 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 three percent women Marines in the wow. in the U.S. population. Wow. So it's, that's yeah, incredible. It's crazy. It is crazy. Okay, so I'm just a little flabbergasted right now and almost speechless, which you know doesn't happen very often in my life. But what an amazing story to hear this and everything that you learned in the Marine Corps, you still use today. Oh, definitely. And when I, when you're young, you just start, you just do what you do. You know, you're, you're going to school or you're, you know, you're learning information, uh, you're hanging out with friends and you just there. Mm -hmm. But once I got older and I look back, I realize how much that shaped me as an adult, Mm -hmm. my confidence. I know that's where it stems from my Mm -hmm. willing to take risks, my willingness to trust myself Mm -hmm. that yes, things don't always go my way, but I can figure things out. I'm resourceful. I'm not going to, you know, die. Um, and then it just, it allows me to be much more resilient. And, and I, and so now I realize how much, like I've had an incredible life. It's made me realize how much I've applied that all along Mm -hmm. the way without really recognizing that's what I am. Mm -hmm. But now when you were in school, you mean that you were in school while you were in the Marines and they put you through a program? What were you studying there? Yeah. So uh, when I talk about school, it was just the military school. Okay. And so my uh, my job was aviation radio repair. Okay. So I had to learn electronics theory and all about radios. Did you ever do anything like that before? No, not at all. So I end up spending about a year in school uh-huh. and out of my four year enlistment, you know, that's a pretty good chunk of time. And then once I got out of the Marine Corps, I couldn't find work because a lot of those places, they wanted five to eight years experience. Oh. And I didn't have that length of time, uh-huh. but I had the knowledge. And, and so you had I- a pretty intense background then. Yes. I mean, your knowledge base was solid. Yes. Nobody could ever you know, argue that you didn't know what you were doing. But before you did get out of you know, the Marine Corps, when your four years were up, was it Desert Storm? Yes. 
So I was in during Desert Storm. My unit was one of the first to go. Oh my god! But they went so quickly that they said no women in combat. Uh And so uh, there were 12 of us that stayed behind, uh, the women and a couple of injured guys, and my unit left. And I'll never forget that day, just standing on the side of the the road by our building Uh and saluting as the bus left. And these are your coworkers, they're your friends, they're, you know, boyfriends, (laughs) ex-boyfriends. The brotherhood. Yes. And and so it, it stirred up all these mixed emotions about their going to war, you know, because uh-huh. we didn't know what to expect back well, then. Oh, yeah, nobody knew what was going on. Yeah, because that was one of the, the first uh, really big campaigns that, uh-huh. that was happening, and that was the talk of weapons of mass destruction, and so there was so much fear and unknown about it, whereas now you can, you know, search on YouTube and find videos, and so um, it was this mixed feeling of watching them go, not feeling like I'm contributing, mm. and, you know, and then, you know, da- like I just... It wasn't so much that I doubted myself as a Marine, but when I was watching what other people have gone through, I just, I felt inadequate in ways. Mm-hmm. But now, I, I once I recognized that those were the feelings I was having, mm-hmm. then I just realized that it's my opportunity to give back, give them a safe space to be. And I have so much respect for combat veterans uh-huh. that, um, you know, I, I know the training they went through and I just have respect. And mm-hmm. so... I, I contribute where I can. I'm involved with several charities. Oh, and, nice. And, nice. And I love it that you're using the term brotherhood because how many women can say that? It is It is true. The And it's hard to say, well, we I have sisterhoods too. But, right, of course. We all do. But everybody expects women to have sisterhoods, you know, and I've got several of them, my own sisterhood, my blood sisters, because I have four sisters and actually was raised with three female cousins too. We were all interspersed in age. So there were eight of us all totaled. So yeah, it's and it's still a sisterhood that we're, you know, and my b- ballet sisterhood and, you know, every, networking sisterhood, all these sisterhoods. But to really have a band of brothers, and that was something for me when I started my martial arts that was really weird. I mean, it was just weird. And it was like, no, I'm not going to be here long enough. You don't even have to know my name. I'm just going to take a few classes and quit. But then after a while, it was just this incredible friendship that I can't even describe. I mean, it was really... A, a wonderful sense of belonging to a group of guys and almost being one of the guys. It's mm-hmm. just, it's hard to describe. Yes. And I, I, I love that. Like I, they just make me laugh. There's mm-hmm. something about uh, male humor <laughs> for yeah. sure. And um, just that it really was this, I just felt like one of them. And uh-huh. I didn't really think about the guys and the girls and and i just same with races like i just don't really i just see people Uh uh-huh and so it's it's just that sense of community Mm -hmm. and one thing that i've seen evolve uh recently with the the military too especially now that women are doing a lot more combat roles Mm -hmm. is i in ways it feels like they're trying to turn them into men oh and it that part's driving me crazy because i think as women we have such beautiful gifts of compassion and nurturing and that Mm -hmm. doesn't make you soft but I think the military could really stand to benefit from those things well we've got the compassion we've got the nurturing we've got the softness and you know we have also don't tick us off and I even used to say you know oh for heaven's sake when it all started you know women in combat or whatever and this big controversy and it was like catch me on a bad day when I'm PMSing, give me a rifle, teach me what to do, and let me at it. You know, <laughs> so there is that other mama bear almost type of energy that women have that I think sometimes is underrated. Yes, definitely. But when you see it, you recognize it because it's in <laughs> each and every one of us. And when men see it, they recognize it too. Yes, definitely. And I, th- I think men also can, uh, they're drawn to that, that, strong, that strength uh-huh. of women that, is at a level that they don't have, you right. know, because it's very different between physical strength and, like you said, that that mama bear kind uh-huh. of uh, mentality. And that strength of spirit. Yes. And that's actually what the guys used to 
teach me. It was really funny. It had been after I'd been training probably for about at least two years. So it was obvious I was sticking around for a while and I wasn't going to quit. And they tr finally figured me out that, oh, okay, it's time to stop for a few minutes, let her go fix her lipstick or, you know, her hair or whatever. But it was really funny because after about those two years, the guys would start coming up to me and whispering a word in my ear. And I was like, what are you talking about? And it was Kenichi or Kunich, can't remember exactly how to say it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they said, it's actually the female warrior that I said that I think at the networking meeting, it's nine plus one because nine is the most powerful number. So women warriors, the women um, ninja were actually called Kunich because it was nine plus one. Hmm. So the most powerful plus, and they were the ones who were most feared in the entire you know community because they were the ones who were the fiercest but you didn't know it mm. because they had the disguise of being soft and yeah so it was just fun that's interesting it is I isn't love it that. Yes. i know i love that <laughs> it's the female warrior so anyway let's talk about what you are doing now so now i am a, a business and lifestyle strategist mm -hmm. and I've realized how I like much... the way you say strategist. <laughs> I like that. That sounds so much more um, analytical than I'm a coach. Well, yeah. So one of my gifts, so after I got out of the Marine Corps, I spent 20 years in corporate as a software developer. So I'm very analytical too. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to take that, that personal development side, the, the growth, the confidence, the, the strength, and to couple that with the analytics, I can help people really get to that core of who they are mm -hmm. and how to make that measurable. Mm -hmm. So when they, when doubts start to come up, mm -hmm. it, you know, they have something tangible that they can grab onto. And, uh, but when I work with clients, I really like to do it through adventure retreats. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's one of those things that <clears throat> in the Marine Corps, I realized like doing these things that were so different and things that I never thought I, I could imagine myself doing mm -hmm. what that brought to me from a personal growth standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to replicate that in ways uh, on, on, the, on these adventure retreats. Mm -hmm. and, so how did you come up with the idea for the adventure retreats? Did that just come up to you one day or, or how did that develop? Well, I moved to Colorado uh, after I got out of the Marine Corps mm -hmm. and I connected with some friends who were pretty adventurous. Mm -hmm. And just like college, you know, growing up and not, or not having that college example, I also didn't have that example of travel and adventure. Okay. And so all of a sudden to meet these friends that they're like, well, let's go biking in the south of France. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> and so I had done some, you know, pretty cool things for the last 20 years. And so when I started my business, I knew I wanted to incorporate that in some way, mm -hmm. but I was just intimidated as far as I kept feeling like it was going to be this big undertaking. But then when I realized that I've been doing it all along, just with mm -hmm. friends, right. that it was really easy to pull in. I just had to give myself permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that self-talk that gets in the way a lot, right? Yes. I'm sure you know that from the people that you work with and you see it all the time. So tell us about some of the adventures you have done. Uh, so I took a group to Belize mm -hmm. and we went swimming with sharks. <laughs> and the, the <laughs> lesson that I really liked in that is that we make up all these stories. And so when you think of swimming with sharks, you think you're going to get your arm chewed off and you're really afraid. But then when you do it and you realize it really wasn't so bad, they're really gentle, and that you made up all these stories, mm -hmm. you realize that you've been doing that all along in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that, and then we also went tubing through caves. Mm -hmm. And so the lesson in that was that life is full of unknowns, and you don't mm -hmm. know what is going to be around the next bend, but you're resourceful and you'll figure uh -huh. it out. Uh, and then after that, I did a trip to Ireland, and we mm -hmm. went biking along the mm -hmm. coast. And so that one was much more physical, mm -hmm. but uh, my client said that it made them realize that they're stronger than they thought oh, and they don't beautiful. push themselves enough. Beautiful. Uh, so it's, it's just a, a really great way to experience a country for sure. So I want to go back to the sharks <laughs> because, um, yeah, I'm sure they are really gentle when they're not hungry. And I'm guessing you didn't just kind of go around in a boat until you saw a school of sharks and then dive in and swim with them. Was it a controlled environment or how did, how, clear this up for me. It's, it's not a controlled environment, but there are certain areas where the sharks like to hang out. They, they, these were nurse sharks 
And nurse sharks like to just lay on the bottom. Oh, okay. And but they're big. They can be like eight, nine feet long. Oh god. And so it's a little unnerving when you hop in the water and they're like nine or like three or four nine feet sharks swimming at you. But they really could care less. So were you down deep or were you just swimming on the surface? It or was snorkeling. Uh, it's probably fifteen feet deep water okay so it really was and we're just snorkeling okay with them yes wow wow <laughs> i'm still we're trying to wrap my head around that that that's just amazing and then the tubing did you have anybody who was uh, claustrophobic no it it really the the caves are really pretty big okay uh, but it is dark you're wearing headlamps <laughs> And, oh, um, but then you come out into an opening and it's bright uh-huh. sunshine and then you go uh-huh. around a bend as well. So it's, it's really the same thing. It was just, it's more about the mental game. Uh huh. Well, it is quite the mental game and what a stressful situation to be in, but yet being supported at the same time. Yes. And, and it's one of those things too, like that community, you mm-hmm. know, when you're with a group mm-hmm. of people and you're out doing something in an exotic location that you never thought you, you didn't really imagine yourself uh-huh. being in. And then to just be able to have that, uh, that, that connection and that community and just experiencing something really cool uh-huh. with people that, uh, were strangers at one point, but now mm-hmm. you realize that you also have this common ground of, uh, adventure and this uh, drive for life. Oh, I'm sure that you develop some very strong relationships. Yes. During that time, not only you as you know their coach, but even the people on the trip together, because you know I, I can just see them encouraging each other and just you know I mean I went on a trip to Cabo one time and we had all these wonderful activities. It was a, a trip that my husband earned through work, and you know just zip lining and and rappelling down this wall. I mean, I didn't know we were going to be doing a lot of these things. And it was, at first, it was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. But it was so much fun. And the way that we were getting excited for other people, you know, when somebody who was fearful and they conquered their fear and they rappelled down the wall, that was me. Or, you know, they couldn't lift their feet off the ground to even go 12 feet, you know, like right above the ground to do the first zip line. Once again, that was me. Uh, But, you know, the encouragement and everything and how much we cheered each other on. And it was just a wonderful team building experience. So I'm sure that that's why they did it, too, for his company. Yes, we uh, we also went ziplining on that trip. I completely forgot about that. So you said ziplining. But the women that had uh, went, they had never ziplined before Uh either. And so just that intimidation, asking Mm -hmm. all these questions Mm -hmm. as they're getting started. But then after a while, they, you know, arms in the air and they're, you know, squealing with delight. And they can't wait for the next. Uh, zip line and it's it really is fun to watch and the way we did it you know of course the one first one was very small like I said is maybe 30 feet long and you know just maybe 10 feet above the ground and you know it's terrifying and then before you know it we're just zip lining over these incredibly deep beautiful canyons and it was going longer and longer and of course they're videoing a lot of this stuff and my mother when she saw the videos just looked at my dad and said I'm going to kill her it's like, why? It turned out okay, you know, but it is, it's something, I think you have to push yourself like that. You really have to challenge yourself to get the personal growth and the confidence. Otherwise we just start to shrivel. Mm -hmm. And I think even as we, I don't like to say age, I like to say as we mature, you know, people do start getting uh, more and more narrow minded or, or more and more tunnel vision and more and more like, you know, in their routines and they're afraid to go out and try other things. And I know a few people who are in their seventies and even eighties that are just still going strong and, and doing things that it's like, yes, that's what I want to be someday. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Yes. And you actually just made me think of when you talked about uh, your mom and those things, the, um, the people around you, what that does for my, like the, my clients that go on these trips, like what that does for their circle that are right. watching them. Uh huh. Because all of a sudden they, they see this person that they started to put in a box. Exactly. They have expectations of what they think that person is. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden they're like, well, what do you mean you're going to Belize with this woman you just met and you're going to go <laughs> swim with sharks? You can't do that. <laughs> you might get hurt or, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Oh yeah. You should have seen the shock waves going through not only my friends, but my family 
family when I announced that I was starting to study martial arts. <laughs> it was very impressive. <laughs> it was really impressive. Especially being a dancer, they're probably like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, it was crazy. And it was funny because my father was a black belt in karate. So, and as a matter of fact, I've got his belt. We found it, you know, when we're going through their things after they passed away. And so I do have his belt too. So it's like, yes. And when we were kids, you know, being that my parents kept having girls, I guess my father figured he better do something. So he studied karate (laughs) and he kept trying to get us to come to the gym with him and to learn some things, you know, obvious, you know, concerned father. And we're like, I'm not going to do that. And of course, I ended up in ballet and just, you know, immersed in the girly stuff and everything, you know, Pilates, pedicures, you know, ooh, icky, sweaty martial arts. No, I'm not going to do that. But it was funny when I did start training and my dad, mom and dad had come out to visit. Maybe it was just my dad that one time. And he did come to the dojo to see me train. And I was just a yellow belt. And everybody else is like, well, we want to come and watch. We want to come watch. And I'm like, you know what? I had danced, you know, really high level training for almost 30 years. None of you ever wanted to see me come and, you know, to see me dance. They're like, well, we could see you doing that. We got to see you, you know, in martial arts. So it's really funny. Again, the preconceived ideas. Mm -hmm. And people do have a tendency to label you. Yes. And the thing is that you or people start to grab onto that label and that becomes their identity yes and so when all of a sudden they have like a major life shift like a divorce Mm -hmm. uh they lose their job all of a sudden that those labels and that identity that they were attached to now they feel so lost right right so it's uh it can be really comforting on one hand Mm -hmm. when you're living in that box like you know living up to expectations Mm -hmm. but to have either that disruption or to actually make that choice Mm -hmm. to do something so completely different it's it's so it just makes you more dynamic right and it makes you um more courageous. It's a level of vitality Mm -hmm. that, you know, I never even thought I had, you know, because, you know, I was getting older and just in this little box and just doing what was expected. And, and the labels that were placed on me, even when I was a chronic pain patient, more than once. And, you know, if you hear that label often enough or over and over and over again, you eventually believe it, even if it goes against your inherent belief system, Mm -hmm. it's almost like they're trying to um, program you of no, 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 you can't go swimming with the sharks. You can't do martial arts, you're too old. You can't join the Marines, you're a girl. You know, you hear those things, thank goodness you didn't listen. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Well, and that's what I have loved my entire life. Like I just go against the grain. So I think that when you start to do things that y- you weren't, uh, you didn't really imagine for yourself or that are really um, against what the rest of your circle is doing, mm-hmm. that it first, as you start to grow and you start to do these things, all of a sudden you start to watch those people drift away. Uh-huh. Like, like they're either watching from the sidelines because they're intrigued uh-huh. or they just don't get it. Uh-huh. And you, it, they're forced to look at their own, the own way that they're living and it's uncomfortable for people. So it's easier to just kind of drift away. Well, it's going against the tribe. It's the yeah. tribal mentality. So if you're in our tribe, this is how we do things. This is how we think. This is what we do and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you can't go out of that because, you know, you, no, come on back in. Come on back in. Stay within this tribal circle and don't break it and don't go out. Mm-hmm. So it's funny that one um, business coach that I was telling you about tells the story. There's a certain amount, a certain kind of crab or species of crab. So, you know, when you go to the beach and you're collecting crabs and and put them in a bucket, you always have to put a lid on top. Otherwise, they'll crawl out. I mean, you know, they're not dumb. And there's a certain species that you don't even have to put that lid on top of the bucket as you're collecting them. And do you know why? Mm, Why is that? Because anytime one of the crabs starts climbing up the wall of the bucket to climb out, the other crabs will pull them back in. <laughs> and what an incredible analogy that is. It really is. Because the thing is, is most people will cave to that and they go right back in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but instead, they're aching to get out. Right, right. I want what she's having because she looks like she's having a whole lot more fun. But... Then if they try and do something different or unexpected, then, you know, part another part of their tribe, because we have more than one tribe. 
you know, that, so whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's, you know, spouse, who knows what it is. But, you know, what's that other saying or that phrase I just love so much that well-behaved women rarely make history? <laughs> yes, it's so So I'm true. like, yeah, here's to making history. <laughs> I want to be remembered. I don't want to be boring. Yes. And just being remembered, I also... I want to remember really great experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think even those times that are really difficult, that it still makes for a great story. Right. Like if, if you think of like all the weddings you've been to, <laughs> the ones, they all just bleed together after uh -huh. a while. But the one where, you know, somebody's uncle gets really drunk and starts dancing on the dance floor, <laughs> like you remember that one. And so I think that uh, even just some of these adventures I've done throughout uh, my life, mm -hmm. that it's those moments when things didn't go right, that uh, they're the stories that I tell. So, and, and um, I made me think of this story in the Marine Corps. I had a, a unit commander that we, instead of just running along, he had us, we ran down into a valley. We had to get that the bottom, they had just rained. So there was this mud puddle we had to do um, sit-ups in the middle of the mud. Ugh. So you're getting covered with mud and then you had to run back up the other side and he had sliced watermelon. So you'd have a piece of watermelon <laughs> and it was a hot day and then you'd like run back down, you'd do more sit-ups in the mud and then run back to the top. Ugh. And so it, it is that it was one of those moments that you're really miserable, but uh -huh. at the same time it was fun and exhilarating and it was different. And so it made it much more memorable. Mm -hmm. And so I think the times that you can start to challenge yourself and do things that you just, you didn't imagine for yourself and were against your tribe, uh -huh. uh, what your tribe would normally do, that those are the things that stand out and also make you stand out. Well, and it makes you healthier in a cognitive way even i mean not only is it good for your body but it's really good for your brain because you're challenging yourself in a completely different way and so all those new pathways those neural pathways are lighting up going wow this is really cool this is something completely different i'm not bored anymore you know yes and, and i think that as i've gotten older too i realize how much i thrive on that growth mm -hmm. and that learning and that i never like I said, when you're younger, you just take all that for granted. Right. And, right. and when you start to get into those complacent kind of uh, mindsets, when mm -hmm. you're just doing the same thing you've always done, working at the same company you've always worked at, that you just, you forget that in your neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And know. that's one thing I always tell people, the one thing I am most afraid of in my life is becoming complacent. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is because complacency to me is, that's the beginning of the decline. Yes. Because you're not showing spirit or you're not trying other things. And it doesn't have to be climbing a mountain or swimming with sharks. Just try something different or new or, you know, unexpected or, or un, out of character and just see what happens. Yes, I, I definitely agree. And it was even something that I had taken for granted. Um, I shouldn't say taking for granted. I, I didn't realize how much I had gotten in that place in my career uh -huh. when I was in, in corporate because I was completely complacent when it came to my my career and my getting comfortable in that security of it. Uh -huh. And so that's why I kept reaching for these really cool vacations with my friends oh. and pushing myself physically because I, I needed that challenge. Uh -huh. um, just the same way with like trying to relive that from the Marine Corps. So then how did you break away from that security of 20 years being in corporate and just saying, oh, what the heck and doing what you're doing now? Well, I think it, it really came down to tapping into that courageous side of myself from the Marine Corps, just because I have, I'm one of those people that if I stand on a cliff, I can't stand there and look around. Like I just have to jump because I'm afraid. And so this, I had done it time and again. And so when I was in corporate, I kept thinking about wanting to leave, but then I would tuck myself into the security aspect of mm -hmm. it. Um, I had been at the company so long. I, I had five weeks vacation, which was wow. really rare. And I lived for my travel. So right. I, I kept telling myself, well, just stay. And so finally, um, the last year was the most stressful. I was on a big project and I had uh, recently gone to a personal development um, uh, weekend seminar. And one of the instructors had said, numb is a feeling. And when he mm. said that, I felt like he had kicked me in the stomach because I realized that I'd become totally numb in my uh, career. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I just knew I needed to make a change. Plus I got tired of hearing myself say the same story. Oh. I want to leave, but I'm afraid. I want to leave, but I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And just that, that side of me was just like, 
geez, Tammy, like get it together. Like stop mm-hmm. being afraid. Mm-hmm. And so you took that plunge. Yes. Yeah. So I just, I gave my notice. I shocked everybody because I'm so positive. I handle stress w- really well. Mm-hmm. I was really great at my job. I had just gotten a big promotion. Didn't you have a couple of friends pass away though? Was that? I did. Yeah. Uh, that last year I had four friends pass wow. away. So, and they were all young, various reasons. And uh, it just made me realize that life is short. Uh-huh. And I could take this risk of starting my own company. And, you know, the worst case that happened, I go back and get another job. Mm-hmm. So I really, I, I made up the story about how I was giving up everything when uh-huh. I really wasn't. I still had all that knowledge and skills that I could mm-hmm. apply in all these different ways. Mm-hmm. So what is the name of your company? Or what's the name of your business? It's just TammyMcVay.com. Uh-huh. And uh, my retreats are Destination U. That's okay. What I call my adventure retreat. So we're going to put all of the links on the podcast so people can find you. But um, what would you like to leave our audience with? Like, you know, there was some pearls of wisdom or, you know, I mean, they're, of course, throughout the entire conversation we've been having. But what, what, what would you like to leave them with? I really, I think that women especially are so much stronger than we think Mm -hmm. and we're capable of so much more than we think. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I would really encourage your listeners to try something different that scares you just because you'll never know what you'll discover about yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Tammy. You have been fantastic. This has been so much fun. I've really, really enjoyed it. So um, for my listeners, Check out Tammy's, do you have a website? Yes. So okay. TammyMcVay.com okay. or they can find me online at Tammy McVay Mentor. Okay. And check out her destinations, uh, ad- adventure destinations. That is really totally cool. That's, I don't know if I would have the nerve to, to swim with the sharks, but some of the other stuff sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> so the one woman, a client who was afraid to swim with the sharks, by the very end, she was trying to hold a shark. <laughs> <laughs> so so don't underestimate yourself <laughs> that's right yeah okay so I could see myself doing that it's like honey look what followed me home <laughs> that we have a new pet <laughs> so Tammy thank you so much for being on the show I really appreciate it so thank you all for listening I really appreciate you tuning in and remember to just take some chances in life and you know do something new do something different you might really surprise yourself And that's a wrap on another episode of The Femininja Project. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, be safe, be strong, and until next time, bye now.